People on social media are running into the same problem, iPhone glitches. Is it a coincidence or a ploy to get you to upgrade? We look into that tonight. Get ready for wet weather. Tracking rain headed our way. Even more rain on the way for Wednesday. Your forecast coming up next. Weddings, parties, animals and antiques. Oh, there's food too. You can find it all at one Green Bluff Orchard. We'll take you there for tonight's Inland North Best. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Great to have you with us. I'm Jane McCarthy. We are just a few days away until the official end of summer, but it's already feeling like fall is kicking in. Yeah, let's get straight to Tom Sherry in the Weather Center tonight with what we can expect for the rest of the week, Tom. Yeah, we had temperatures in the 60s today. Yesterday, we only had a high temperature of 58 degrees, but you can see we're at 63 right now, but we do have rain that is just to the west of us. That's headed our way. Wind is currently out of the south southwest at seven miles per hour, and you see the cloudy sky that's a live view of Riverfront Park. So you can see that a lot of the cloud cover now has moved in. Chances of rain this evening. We'll get a few isolated showers for the evening hours, but really we're going to save most of the rain just in time for you to have to head off to work tomorrow morning and for the kids to be at the bus stop. 70% chance of rain by 7 o'clock in the morning. You say how much rain? Well, we could get some thunderstorms, uh, especially in the mountains of northern Idaho. So we could get up to a quarter inch of rain depending uh, on your location. You can see lots of unstable air on uh, the Pacific satellite uh, picture there. And again, those high, uh, those uh, big, bright white uh, uh, dots out there. Those are cold air cumulus clouds. So that's why tomorrow's high temperature will be much cooler than what we saw today and well below the average of 73 for this time of year. Most of the rain is heading to the north of us up into northeastern Washington. We'll look for uh, more rain overnight with a low of 49, 59. All we're going to muster for high tomorrow. Again, the average high is 73. Look for rain on and off throughout the Wednesday. For the weekend, gets better. Partly cloudy and 69 on Saturday. Mostly cloudy and 67 on Sunday. I'm checking your 10-day forecast in just a few minutes. Sounds good, Tom. Thank you very much. In other news, complaints about iPhone glitches always spike around this time of year. And some say it's Apple's way to get you to buy a new iPhone. But is there more to it? Krem 2's Brandon Jones explains why your phone may be having some problems. The iPhone 11 came out last week, and shortly after, Twitter users were chirping about expected slowdowns in older phones. This isn't uncommon, though. It's something that's discussed amongst iPhone users every September when Apple unveils their new products. It seems like every time a new iPhone comes out, the older generations start acting up. Personally, my iPhone has already had some glitches and I've had it for two years, so I think Apple is telling me I need to buy the iPhone 11. Apple has an explanation for why this happens. Last year, they admitted iPhone users can experience slowdowns because of the chemical age in batteries. New updates in the phone mean more performance management is necessary, and that ultimately drains the life of phones that have been out longer. To break that down, the higher the chemical age in battery, the more likely it is for unexpected shutdowns and noticeable flaws. Listed on Apple's website is effects that people have been talking about for years. Longer app launch times and lower frame rates while scrolling were among those issues mentioned. So to the 97% of my followers who said the phones start glitching on purpose, you're not completely wrong because larger updates are meant for newer phones. The Apple solution to this problem was to include the battery health monitor on any iPhone that has iOS 11.3 or higher. If you've got something older than that, you'll have to buy a $29 battery replacement, and the company says all iPhone models will diminish in their capacity over time. In Spokane, I'm Brandon Jones, Crim2 News. Hmm. How's your phone been? It's fine. You tell me I have an iPhone 7S. <laughs> I checked for you last I time. I know. I just said, what's my phone again? I remember when I had a flip phone and the battery would last like a week on that yes. thing, right? That is interesting that Brandon mentioned that the updates tend to drain the battery more. Yep, or so they say. Yes. <laughs> well, in other news, this next picture may look like spa, but it's actually a new nursing area for traveling moms. This area just opened at SeaTac Airport. It's one of the only airports in the country to offer something like this. The suite has three private nursing areas that can be curtained off. It has two lounge areas, and it also has a restroom and sinks with filtered water. This design was inspired by a lot of mom blogs. The team designed a space based on what mothers wished airports would provide. Those details include full-size mirrors and blow dryers to clean up spills or a wet shirt. That would come in handy. It looks nice, right? Mm -hmm. Well, nearly 50 families could have a new home next year. An affordable housing building in Hilliard is set to open next October. The construction already started. The complex will house about 150 people. It's dedicated to Jane Ald. She dedicated her life to serving low-income families in Spokane. 
Leaders behind the project say they want this home to provide a new chance for families and add safety and stability to their lives. While Spokane's population climbs, the city's crime rate is actually on the decline. A new report released by the Spokane Police Department shows a 15% drop in crime so far this year compared to the same time last year. The report mainly looks at property crime and violent crime, but if we break down the numbers by specific crime, we see all but one saw a decline. Commercial robbery actually increased a little more than one and a half percent so far this year. There are a lot of other factors that go into this report. If you'd like to read it, it's posted now on crem.com. Well, thousands of Washington State students are not compliant with the new vaccination law. Public school students are now required to get vaccinated or claim an exemption to attend school and daycare. Crem 2's Amanda Rowley found there are still thousands of Spokane County students out of compliance. Washington State no longer allows personal exemptions for the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine. If students do not have the vaccine, they are not allowed at school or daycare. That law went into effect in July. Data released by the Washington Department of Health shows there are thousands of students from the 2018-2019 school year who are not in compliance with the law. Statewide, 88% of all students kindergarten through 12th grade enrolled in public schools are up to date on their vaccinations, with 4.8% listed as exempt. In Spokane County, a little more than 86% of students completed their vaccines, while 8.5% are listed as exempt. The data also breaks down the reasons students claimed an exemption. In Spokane County, a little more than 6% of exempted students claimed a personal exemption. About 1.5% claimed medical exemption. According to state law, that 6% of students can no longer claim a personal reason. We asked school districts in the Spokane area how many students are not up to date on their vaccines. Mead School District sent out a letter to families in June. It also called each family with personal exemptions in June and August before school began. Right now, the district has about 80 students who do not have the required MMR exemption or vaccine. District spokesperson Jolene Andreas says students will be allowed in school if they have paperwork showing they have the first of two doses. This puts them under conditional status. Then the district will start to exclude in October after their 30-day conditional status is over. Spokane Public Schools spokesperson Brian Coddington says 617 students currently have MMR vaccine exemptions. Of that total, 35 have previously listed personal exemption. That leaves 582 students with a medical or religious exemption. He says parents receive several rounds of reminder calls and letters, including a reminder on the district's website. Spokane's exclusion date is October 11th. Central Valley School District does not have data yet. Spokesperson Marla Numberg says the district is following procedures guided by the Department of Health. Amanda Rowley, CREM2 News. In other news, it's called the common cold, but it is notoriously difficult to cure. And that is largely because there are so many different viruses in the same family and they can mutate quickly to get around our best efforts. Researchers at Stanford and the University of California, San Francisco, took a different approach. Individual viruses do not have all the components needed to replicate. Instead, they infect a cell and steal what they need. So the researchers modified cells with the protein needed for viruses to reproduce and switched it off. When they did this, it stopped the common cold dead in its tracks. Wow, still too early to use this treatment on humans, but patients could soon see this method in drugs that would temporarily suppress that protein.